been searching, trying to find the way to walk. Lord, I humble myself before thee. I don't want to be lost. I've been taught to search the scriptures and read the word of truth. Like you said, just like you promised, I'll be just like you. How can you hear to believe? Take the time out just to read. You will find that you've been wrong. Jesus is coming to his home to take his rest in Zion. You won't get to heaven. No, 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 no. Then I know it's true. Hello, I'd like to uh, welcome each and every one to another edition of The Bible Speaks, uh, where we come forth bringing the word of God, even the word of truth. I'll be the teacher today, Brother Sidney, reading today will be our brother Andre. And today, uh, today's title and lesson will be what time it is, what time it is, because some people don't know what time it is. And it's important to understand and know what time and what's taking place in certain time frames. So we're going to kind of go through this lesson. We're going to, um, this lesson is built up on a little history and the word of God like we do. Some of the uh, history quotes that I put out here, you can go and research them uh, on, uh, like the brothers say, it's stuff that's Googleable. <laughs> you can Google these things and pull this information up. Uh, or go to the encyclopedias and stuff like that. But in any case, we're going to start uh, right into this lesson. We're going to start in First Chronicles chapter 12. And we're going to look at, this is when uh, David was coming into the kingdom. The Lord had promised that he was going to uh, give this kingdom over to the son of Jesse. And uh, we're going to kind of look at how this was uh, forming up and a quote that was made in particular. But we're going to pick it up at verse 12, uh, First Chronicles chapter uh excuse me first chronicles chapter 12 verse 16 first chronicles chapter 12 verse 16 all right my brother when you get it go ahead and there came of the children of benjamin and judah to the hold unto david mm -hmm. and david went out to meet them and answered and said unto them if ye become if you become peaceably unto me to help me my heart should be knit unto you okay but if you come to betray me to mine enemies seeing there is no wrong in my hands the God of our fathers looked their own and rebuke it. Now, David said, okay, you know, you got to make sure and see where things is at. So he talking to them, they talking to him. He said, okay, if you come in to uh, try to rebuke me, the Lord going to deal with you. He said, but if you come peaceably to help, then it's gonna, it's gonna, it could work out. So we're going to look at this, and uh, my heart going to be knit with you. But go to verse 18 and go ahead. Then the Spirit came upon Amasa, who was chief of the captains, and he said, Thine are we, David, and on thy side, thou son of Jesse. Uh huh. Peace, peace be unto thee. Yes. And peace be to thine helpers. Okay. For thy God help of thee. Then David received them and made them captains of the band. So it looked like everybody know what time it is, right? They like he like, hey, the Lord is with you, uh, David, and we gonna and the Lord with you and your helpers, and we gonna be with you. And peace, peace. And he says, uh, um, he told David, and David, it said, and David received them. And David promoted these guys and made them captains, right? So everybody knew what time it is. David knew that they were coming to help him. And they knew what time that the Lord was turning this thing over to the son of David, or the son of Jesse, which is David. But go to skip down to verse 22 and go ahead. For well, at that time, day by day, they came to David to help him. Uh-huh. Until it was a great host like the host of God. But day by day, people was coming to David to help out. And they were seeing what's going on. Man, the Lord is turning this thing over to the son of uh, of Jesse, which is David. And they see this thing and they say, hey, we come to help you. And David say, OK, and he promoting these guys and stuff like so everybody looking like they know what time it is. Right. And you got to know how the Lord is operating and what's taking place in what they call real time now and day. <laughs> what's happening in real time? In real time, some people didn't recognize Jesus when he came on the scene. They didn't know that that's the son of God, the savior of the world, the anointed one, the Christ. Some people didn't know. That's why I said some of them hung up. Uh, uh, they lifted him up and put him up on that cross because some men didn't know that this was the Christ that they were dealing with. Because you got to understand stuff in real time. And that's what, and don't we deal with real time nowadays? It's real time, real time. I want that real time uh, action. Or I want that real time information, that info. Now, skip that. Uh, go ahead and read verse 23, brother. 
and these are the numbers of the bands that were ready armed to the war, and came to David to Hebron to turn the kingdom to, of Saul to him, according to the word of the Lord. To turn, see, they seen this thing. Did the, the turn the kingdom of Saul to David by the word of the Lord? They like, man, the Lord. This is what the Lord is doing. We with it, and everybody with it. And then, like I say, David promoted them. But now we want to read one thing that happened when these brothers came to David, because all these you can read about it. The Lord was going through these different tribes and some of the brothers, some of their works and some of their valor and stuff like that. But skip down to verse 32 and go ahead. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the time. These men understood the time. They knew what time it was. <laughs> of the children of Issachar, go ahead. To know what Israel ought to do. Uh-huh. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. Hey, that's, ain't that something? These brothers, they knew what time it was. But let's go into Romans chapter 13. But these brothers, they said they understood the time to know what Israel ought to do. And we need to know what time it is right now and what we ought to do in getting our lives prepared because we're going to look at what time it is right now in particular. But we're just going through some things to show you that at different time periods, they were talking about different things. And if you were aware and observant and walking circumspect and doing what the Lord tell you, watching and praying, you would know what time it is too and know what you ought to do concerning your own personal life. And that's what we're really looking at. Because sometimes we're looking at other people's lives and what they're doing and what they're not doing. And you're not observing and being observant with what the Lord is doing and what your life is doing. And that's what's uh, really important. But we're going to go to Romans 13 and look at something. And I want you to pick it up at verse 10. Romans 13. And I want you to pick it up at verse 10. Go ahead when you get it. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Sound like something that you need to uh, uh, look at and deal with, right? Love work no ill to his neighbor, didn't it say? So sometimes you looking at uh, you, we know we looking at sports or different things like that. It say love work no ill to his neighbor. You see, uh, we like some of these sports, you, especially you get into boxing and. MMA fighting or something like that. These guys beating each other down. But then they, this man going to take him to breakfast in the morning. But once I win this money and whoop your head a little bit, but he loved his brother. Hold on, man. Love work no ill to his, uh, to his neighbor or his brother, right? But then, too, you look at some of the things that's going Even in sports sometimes, you like, man, it's so much evil and violence. All this, um, it's a lack of love out here. And then you turn the TV, you see in all this. Then you say, well, I'm going to watch sports. You watch sports, the man fouled a man so hard like he trying to kill him. We playing basketball, he fouled him like that. Then, you, uh, uh, then the man cursed the ref out. All this is stuff that's contrary to love. It said love work no ill to his neighbor or his brother. But go ahead and, and that's something that we have to work on. But go ahead and read. That knowing the time, that now is the high time to awake out of sleep. Mm -hmm. But now was our salvation nearer than we we than when we believe. Ain't that something? It said no, and you know, and you need to know what time it is. That now is the time of salvation, and it's high time. Cause look at what Paul says in that next verse. Go ahead. The night is far spent. He said the night is far spent. That was in his time. So see, we understand what time it is too. Cause some people don't understand that the evening starts a day according to the Lord. So the evening comes first, and then the morning. Paul said, "Hey, the 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 day uh 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 the nighttime is far spent." And he said, "What? Go ahead. The day is at hand. The day is at hand. We in the daytime, and the day is at hand. And when you looking at the uh, time period that the Lord say about the thousand years being one day to the Lord, we going into what day are we looking? What day is at hand? The day of the Lord, even the seventh day, which is the Sabbath day." So we in the daytime of what they call this sixth day. But go ahead and read, brother. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Uh-huh. Let us put on the armor of light. Now, he said, let us do what? Cast off these works of darkness and put on this armor of light. Read verse 13 for me. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. That's good. So he's saying you got to uh, learn how to... Put on, put off the works of darkness and put on this armor of light, which is the word of God, dealing with the things that's good and according to the Bible. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 46. And, you know, brothers and sisters need to know what's up when it comes to that. Dealing with love, not working ill to your neighbor, and knowing that it's a time of salvation. It's high time, he said, to wake out of this sleep, right? It's high time. 
it's really high time and it's really close because I had one of my relatives even say to me, oh, and it's an older brother. This brother, that, as they say, he got one foot on the banana peel and mm -hmm. another one in the grave. That's mm -hmm. how old this brother is. But he told me, yeah, uh, Sydney, they always been talking about wars and rumors of wars and stuff like that, you know. So he's not seeing, recognizing what time it is. But I, I told him, I said, it has not been a time that men has been talking strongly about the mark of the beast as they talking now. You have, you have countries that have gotten into this uh, thing. If you paying attention to what's going on, and they setting up a system that is like unto what the Lord said is going to be. But let's go into this uh, Second Peter, excuse me, Isaiah chapter forty six. Almost got off track already, and we just getting started. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 46, and I want you to pick it up at verse 9, my brother. Isaiah 46 and 9, go ahead. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. That's right. The Lord be letting you know, hey, amen. It ain't nobody else you can deal with. You have to go into this book and see what the Lord is saying, because ain't nobody else you're going to be able to get around him with. Well, Lord, my um my mother, she was a good uh Christian, so uh you knew her, right? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know you. You got to deal with this thing and understand that he ain't no ain't none besides him. Go ahead. I am God and there is none like me. And you got to know ain't none like him. And the Lord is a merciful God, but he's also a jealous God. And that mean and, and the scriptures tell us God is not mocked. So you can't play with him. <laughs> you got to operate this thing, understand what's going on, what the Lord is doing. And we have to make some changes in our lives because sometimes that's the problem that people are not making changes. And the Lord said he's going to flick those. That don't they have no changes. <laughs> he God gonna flick them. Because some people learn what's right, but they still do the wrong thing. Some people know, well, I know the Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week, but I go to church on Sunday. See, you got knowledge, you learn it better. They say when you learn better, you're supposed to do better. Some people learn better, they don't do better. The Lord is looking at this. And it's high time, because He's gonna tell you about what He bringing. We always say in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. We're going to look at something that he says here. Go ahead and uh, pick it up in verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning mm -hmm. and from ancient times to things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. The Lord declared the end from the beginning. He already told us what the end going to be. He let you know what time it is. The Lord tell you some of the evil that's going to take place in this earth, like he was talking about this temple that's going to be built over in Jerusalem. Now, you have men in this our day that has dedicated an altar to this temple that's going to be built in Jerusalem. So things are forming up, as the Lord say, because he already told you the end. All you got to do is make these adjustments. We see things have happened in the past. We see things are currently happening, but sometimes we don't believe that which is to come. We, but if you're paying attention, you know what's going on and you see how the Lord is operating and what's taking place. But now go ahead and read. Verse 11. Mm hmm calling the ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yes. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Now, when the Lord uh say he gonna, uh, he spoken something and he done proposed it, he gonna do it. <laughs> and we have to understand that it's true and we'll see some of the things that he's already called that came to pass. He talked about the nations who was gonna rule upon the earth. He called them even in order called Babylon. He called the Medes and the Persian Empire. He called the Greek Empire. He called the Roman Empire and told you it's going to bring you all the way to the end, which we see is saying that the Roman Empire, the richest the world has ever known. People are not paying attention. The, the word of the Lord is true, but some people don't want to get in. See, that's real talk, see it? Oh, but we want to talk real talk when we on the streets. Or when we out in uh, our circles here and there, but then when it's real talk about the Bible, oh, see, see, brother, y'all getting a little uh, detail. Y'all getting graphic. You need to know what time it is in specific. But now, go ahead and read, brother. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. There's some people that's got some stiff, stiff hearts and the stout, that proud heart. We're going to look at this. Go ahead. I bring near my righteousness. It should not be far off. Mm -hmm. And my salvation should not tarry. Yes. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. See, he said he going to set this thing up in Jerusalem, in Zion. That's what he said the Lord has always desired to dwell there. And he's going to do it. 
But let's go into Genesis. I mean, excuse me, let's go into Second Peter. Second Peter. But he said that what is near to come? His righteousness. He about to bring that righteousness near. So he's looking for those who are operating in righteousness. Because the Lord is going to have a problem with those who exercising in evil and his wickedness. But we're going to go to Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter, the second chapter. And the Lord always talking about visiting. He's going to visit the earth. You got to know when he make this visitation, what is he looking for? He looks for righteousness. And if he don't see righteousness, it's going to be some real issues with some people getting cut off, old and young. And we're going to look at this because <laughs> some people, well, the Lord ain't going to kill nobody. We're going to look at this. Second Peter chapter two. And I want you to pick it up at verse four. Second Peter two and four. All right. When you get it, go ahead. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. See, that's something you got. We got to understand. If it said, if God spared not those angels that got everlasting, that He get, uh, put everlasting life on them, He made them invisible. They got power. They above man. It says the angels are a, a little bit higher than man. Man was made a little bit lower than the angels, but. It said here, but if God didn't spare them, that what? That sin. Because, see, God has a problem with sin. That's why it's important to know what sin is. And some people don't understand that. A simple definition of sin in 1 John chapter 3 says sin is the transgression of the law. That means you are breaking God's law. So that means some people don't even go in here to try to understand the law. Well, you ain't got to do all that because Christ did it all for me. And they go with some kind of answer that uh, seemed to be much easier than studying to show yourself approved and to adjust your lifestyle. But down, go ahead and read. Spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, mm -hmm. a preacher of righteousness. Now, see, he said he, he saved Noah, eight people. He saved Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. That's eight people. Now, and he said Noah was what? I didn't went here because it said Noah was a preacher of righteousness to let you know. Noah was telling people, hey, a flood going to come on this earth. The Lord is having a problem with all this violence and wickedness and evil. And the Lord is going to bring us a flood to destroy the people. Adjust your lives. So he was preaching this thing. See, because some people are like, I ain't know about it. Didn't nobody tell me. Now, the Lord lets you know what's going on. But now, see, Noah was preaching righteousness. Go ahead. Bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And who we going to flood out? The ungodly. But now the Lord talking about, so now in this, that day, we talking about the son of man going to come himself and set this thing straight. And he coming back like the lion of Judah. But we're going to look at this. Let's go into Genesis chapter 6 and look at the beginning and how the Lord was telling us what he did in the beginning. Because some people like, the Lord ain't going to destroy uh, nobody. The Lord won't kill nobody. God is good. God is merciful. Brother, I ain't trying to hear all that what y'all talking about. But we're going to look at this because it's something that you need to know to know what is the time. Now, Genesis chapter 6 and pick it up at verse 1, my brother, when you get it. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the faces of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the Son of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. Mm -hmm. They took them wives of all which they chose. All right, so this is really some righteous men that took forth some evil women. That's basically what it's saying. This is not, uh, it said the, uh, uh, the, these men saw the daughters. <laughs> it didn't say they, these angels dealt with women. But you have it written in the Apocrypha. That's where you get this information from. In the Apocrypha, it says that the angels slept with these women. Not in the Bible. It, these, are, these are men that took daughters. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and, it's, and like I said, it's only say, basically saying these uh, righteous brothers was taking some evil sisters and and, and it's, that could get you messed up too. But now skip down to verse um, 5 and continue, brother. And God saw that the wickedness of man was greater than the earth. Mm -hmm. That every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Man, look like we getting kind of back to that. Like I said, when you flipping that TV, you like evil, evil, evil. Man, is there any good programs over here? You watch the news, evil, evil, evil. There's barely any good stories. But go ahead and read. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. It repented who? Oh. And what did he say? And it grieved him at his heart. The Lord grieved. Go ahead. And the Lord said, I will destroy a man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Because of sin. And he, he didn't, uh, it seemed like he didn't hesitate to destroy them angels. He said that God cast them down for sin. And what you think he going to do with man? That's a little lower than the angels. Go ahead. 
both man and beast. Go ahead. And the creepy thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made made them. Go ahead. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, the Lord always sees some righteous in the midst of a lot of evil. That's why if you're doing right, just keep doing right. The Lord can recognize that. He, it, it gets his attention when you're dealing with this righteousness, especially all this evil. But the Lord don't bypass you. He's like, oh, I see that. And he seen those it, mo, uh, uh, Noah and showed him grace. But skip down to verse 13. God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. Go ahead. For the earth is filled with violence through them. Uh -huh. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and thou shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Now, let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 4. So he said, hey, the earth is corrupt. It's a lot of corruption on earth. People talking about it. It's a lot of bribery, uh, racketeering, fraud, theft, all type of violence, even murder is taking place. Just like it, look at this time. And you see what the Lord did. He said, I'm going to destroy them. So the Lord, we looking at this because we're going to go break it down. Let's go into Exodus chapter 4, and I want you to pick it up at verse 20. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 20. Once you get it, go ahead and read. And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass mm -hmm. and returned to the land of Egypt. Moses took the rod of God in his hand. Now the Lord was telling Moses, hey, I'm going to deliver Israel. This was, what they, this was the big event at that time. Israel about to be delivered from Egypt by all these signs and wonders and great miracles by the Lord our God. So this is, and he grabbed the rod of God and he went down there to do it. But skip down to verse 27 and go ahead. And the Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went and met him in the mount of God and kissed him. Uh-huh, so Moses was saying how his uh, mouth didn't work and all this, so the Lord gave him somebody to talk up for him. But go ahead and read, look what happened. And Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. Now, Moses told Aaron all that the Lord, uh, all the words that the Lord told him, right? And all which the signs that the Lord commanded him. So now Moses and now Aaron know what time it is. The Lord showed Moses. Moses showed Aaron. Now go ahead and read. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. Uh-huh. Now see, and, and go ahead. Then respect all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses. Now, Moses went and grabbed the elders and let them know what's up. And now go and then and then Aaron went and spake all the words. Go ahead. And and did the signs in the sight of the people. Now all the people know what's up. See, you want to know what time it is. Hey, the Lord about to deliver us from Egypt. Look what the people said. Go ahead. And the people believed. Uh-huh. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked upon their affliction. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped. So Israel was happy. Let's go into 2 Kings chapter 17. So you can go look at the uh, the Exodus from Egypt. And read, and you can read in this book. You can keep reading about the signs and the things that the Lord did. And you can Google that as well. And see what you come up with. Let's go into uh, 2 Kings chapter 17. But that's what they were talking about. The big conversation was the Lord is about to deliver this people from Egypt. And they dealing with that at that. They knew what that time was. But let's go into 2 Kings chapter 17. And when you uh, get it, pick it up at verse 1. 2 Kings 17 and 1. Go ahead. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hosea, the son of Eli, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. All right, go ahead. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Now, when you do evil and sin, the Lord got a problem. But go ahead and read. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria. And Hosea became his servant and gave him presents. And go ahead. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea. Uh-huh. For he had sent messengers to so king of Egypt and bought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Now the king of Assyria, this Shalomazer say, man, something wrong, man. Hoshea usually bring me a gift up here every year. He ain't bring no gift, something going on. So Hoshea try to be slick right now, and he ain't bring him no gift. He, Because he grabbed Egypt and going to come against this thing, right? But you can't circumvent the word of the Lord. You need to know what time it is. When the Lord is doing something and the Lord says it's going to happen, he have declared it, it's going to happen. You just got to roll with it and know what time it is. Hey, this is what the Lord say going to happen. We got to deal with it. But go ahead and read. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went to Samaria and besieged it three years. Uh-huh. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria. Yes. And placed them in Hala and in Habar 
by the river of Gozan in the city of the Medes. Now in the other scriptures it say Israel was eating unclean things in the cities of the Medes when they were taken by uh, uh, into captivity into Assyria. But the thing is too, but they were sinning and the Lord said, I'm going to tell you, he had the prophets coming to them, telling them, hey, the Lord is going to deal with you for this transgression. Telling the kings of Israel, but this was 722 uh, B.C. You can go type this uh, into your Google and look at this event and even history will bear this thing out and show you that it's the same. Because some people, well, I don't believe the word. Well, man got the same uh, type of story. But we know what the word is true. But go ahead and read verse 7. For so, for so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt uh -huh. from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods. Now, let's go into Second Chronicles chapter uh, 36. That's what people fear nowadays. They fear other gods. That's why they're going to uh, drag the tree up in the house. And celebrate things that's contrary to the Bible. They be running around doing Easter and all types of stuff because they fear these other guys and not what the Bible say. We say that's not in the Bible. So why are you doing it? Obviously, you got uh, something at stake. Like somebody got a knife to your throat to put the tree up. No. <laughs> but see, it, see, it's a spiritual fear that's taking place. And, well, I got to be, uh, you know, my friend's doing it, so I don't want to look odd or different. <laughs> The Lord said his people are peculiar people. They don't do what everybody do. You got to look at what the Lord tell you how to do stuff. But 2 Chronicles chapter 36 and pick it up at verse 11. When you get it, go ahead. Zedekiah was one and 20 years old when he began to reign. Reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Evil always gets you messed up. But go ahead. Look what This is Zedekiah, the last king that Israel had over the kingdom. Because other, like, even when uh, Ezra and Nehemiah came back, and they was talking about that in that time frame, building the temple up and all that. But they wasn't so much kings. They were just uh, uh, some brothers uh, and sisters that got together and say, hey, man, we need to start back doing what's right and, and, and do some things concerning the Lord and the Lord's house. But just like we doing in this day. But now, go ahead and read. And humble not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, uh -huh. speaking for the mouth of the Lord. And he didn't humble himself to that prophet speaking from the Lord. That's what happens. The Lord sent people to speak to you to let you know this is evil. Change your life. Just like we speaking to people now. Saying, hey, the first day of the week is not the Lord's Sabbath day. It is the seventh day, which is Saturday. And we let people know these days. But go ahead and read. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. who had made him swear by God. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. Go ahead. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the, and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. When you got all this sin laying around and doing things contrary to the laws of the Lord, you don't think something's going to happen? Go ahead. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up be times and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Now the Lord sent the messengers a lot of times rising up early like he do us. We get up early, come forth, come to the uh, congregations and teach. But go ahead and read. But they mocked the messengers of God. But what they made, hey, man, ain't nobody, that, that, the Lord ain't about, about to do all that. All you got to do is just believe on Christ, brother. Go ahead. And despise his words. And they despise the word of the Lord. Go ahead. And misuse his prophets. Mm -hmm. Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, to there was no remedy. No remedy. The Lord said, I'm about to deal with it. Go ahead. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees. That's in uh, 586 B.C. You can go Google this. Go ahead. Who slew the young men with, their, with the sword in the house of their sanctuary. Go ahead. And had no compassion upon young man or maiden. Old man, or him that stooped for age. Either him that stooped for age, the old man like, hold, hold on now, young man. He gone too. See, this is how warriors think too. They don't have the mindset of some people. But go ahead and read. He gave them all into his hand. The Lord, it said the Lord, he gave them all into his hand. What verse is that? 17. All right, skip down to verse 20. And them that had escaped from the sword carried him away to Babylon, uh -huh. where they were service to him and his sons and to the reign of the king of Persia. All right, let's go into Luke chapter 3. Now, this is what uh, you see this 586. Israel was carted off to slavery to Babylon. They, and these prophets were telling them, the Lord about to bring you to Babylon for all these transgressions here in the land. But now, let's go into Luke chapter 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Luke chapter 3 and verse 4. All right, once you get that, go ahead and read. 
as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now skip down to verse 27 and go ahead. Which was the son of Johanna, which was the son of Rasha, which was the son of Zerubbabel, which was the son of Selethiel, uh -huh. which was the son of Nero, which was the son of Melchai. Hold on, let's see, uh, Luke 3, right? And uh, I'm sorry, verse 15, I skipped over. Excuse me, verse 15. Go ahead and verse 15. And as the people were in ex expectation, and all the men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. Yes. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. Yes. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. See, at this time, they was talking about the Christ coming to deliver the people, and they was waiting on the Christ. That was the big event. But John said, hey, I'm not the Christ. The one come after me who shoes, he the one. But they was looking for them, and that's what they were talking about at this time. They waiting on the Lamb of God. But at this time, we talking about the Lion of Judah return. That's the big conversation now. The, lion, the Lord coming himself as the Lion of Judah. We're going to look at this. John chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And pick it up at verse uh, 19. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. When you get it, go ahead. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Mm -hmm. and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Okay, so you see how the Lord said he'll give them the keys, but go ahead and read. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes. He be killed. He be raised again the third day. Ain't that something? See, that's what they were talking about at that time. At that time, Jesus started to preach, hey, I'm these uh, chief priests going to take me, slap me around, and do all these things to me and kill me. And that's what they were talking about, the death of Jesus at that time. But now go to John 18 at this time. John chapter 18. And pick it up at verse 50. Uh, John chapter 18 and verse 11. Well, I'm trying to go to this other verse. John chapter 18, verse 11. All right, brother, once you get that, go ahead. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword unto thy sheep. Uh-huh. The cup which my father have given me, shall I not drink it? So, so Peter trying to stop this thing. Like the Lord, they about to take the Lord. So Peter cut the man ear off. The Lord healed the man ear. Hey, Peter, this is what the Lord, this is what the word of the Lord is. You just got to know what time it is and know what to do. Uh, 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 just know, hey, I got to go with the word of the Lord. You can't stop it. Go ahead and read, though. Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him. Go ahead. Led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law of Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. So Caiaphas was the high priest that year, but go ahead and read. Look now, what Caiaphas said. Now Caiaphas was he which was counsel to the Jews. Uh-huh. That it was expedient that one man should die for the people. They was looking for, it was a, it's a man that's going to die for all the people, the sins of the people. Even the high priest, he knew this thing. He might not have been on track totally, but he knew that. And that's what they were talking about. But let's go into Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going to go to Deuteronomy. Now, we know, a lot of us know Deuteronomy 28 pretty well. But we're going to look at something here and just uh, tap it into this lesson. Deuteronomy 28. And read verse 59. Go ahead. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Now, the Lord say, I'm a, uh, the Lord going to do this. Some people, the Lord ain't going to do this, that, and the other. You need to know what time it is and know what the Lord doing and what he not doing. But the thing is, he said, I'm going to give these people some long sicknesses of long continuance, because of some sin that he was prophesying about. And we're going to skip down to verse 68 and kind of look at what time frame this is. Verse 68, go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with the ships. By the way thereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. There ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. And that's something. Let's go into Luke chapter 19. See, the Lord said... I'm going to take you out by ships this time. It's only one nation that we know that was brought into slavery by ships. 
the Lord give you a clear indication on things. It's other signs and wonders like Israel standing on the corners and all this type of stuff that the Lord talk about that. We don't go to social clubs. We go to the corner and hang out. <laughs> But the thing is, the Lord tell you clear identification. He said these people are going to be brought by ship and they're going to be a uh, soul. So Israel was prophesying about these things. And we're going to look at even Jesus talking about this. Let's go into Luke 19 and we're going to pick it up at verse 43. Luke 19 and pick it up at verse 43. When you get it, go ahead. For the day shall come unto thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee. Pass thee round and keep thee in on every side. Now, when Israel was taking off slavery, you can Google 70 AD. You will see this thing, Israel scattered by way of ship, and it said that your enemy's going to come and cast a trench around you. You can read about how this Roman general, uh, 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 Vespasian, he went to go be emperor, and then his son Titus took over against Jerusalem to fight against Jerusalem. He could pass the city round with an earthen dam, Five miles in circumference all around Jerusalem, just like what the Lord is saying here, and, and lay you to the ground and take all Israel out. But go ahead and read. And shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. You ain't know what time the Lord was going to come visit, so now this thing ain't going to happen to you, because some Israel got up out of there. <laughs> but because the Lord tells you, when you see certain things, you got to flee. But let's go into Luke chapter 21. Like, like some of us going to get off into that wilderness. We ain't going to wait for certain things to take place that the Lord talk about that's going to happen during the tribulation. We're going to see these signs and we're going to take off before some of this drama uh, uh, start popping off or going down. But now let's go into Luke 21 and I want you to pick it up at verse 19. Go ahead. Your patience possesses your soul. That's always a good script to keep in mind. In patience, that's how you possess your soul. Don't get too hasty about stuff. You know, I'm talking to Elder Brother Bowie the other day. He say, uh, I say, well, what are we supposed to do, Brother Bowie? He say, just keep doing what you do. He all patient. I said, okay. <laughs> you know, young man, we get a little hasty. So you got to remember, in patience, that's how you're going to possess your soul and you're going to get this thing. But go ahead and read. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, they know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Uh-huh. Skip down to verse 22. We ain't going to read all this. Go ahead. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. That all things that's what? Written. The Lord tell you. He said, I declare the end. The Lord write to you and tell you what's going to happen so you can be prepared. The Lord say, hey, I'm coming back with vengeance. You better change your lifestyle or he going to deal with you. And Look, you you probably seen a man that got angry and furious and started tearing stuff up or getting all crazy, right? you like, man, just leave that brother alone. He angry right now. <laughs> you want to get in his way. An everlasting, powerful being that get furious with anger, how you going to stop him? What you going to say? Lord, uh, calm down a little bit, Lord. He knock you off too. <laughs> you get in the way. No, I'm, let the Lord do his thing. I'm going to get on out the way. Because how you going to stop him? When he when he furious and he angry like this. But now we're gonna we're gonna look at this. What verse was that? It is twenty-two. Skip down to verse twenty-four and go ahead. And this shall fall by the edge as a sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And to, and, and Jerusalem gonna be trodden down to the Gent and the Gentiles still running it right now, which are white people. But now go ahead and read it. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon. Now, the, the Israel led away captive to all nations to 70, 70 A.D. And then from 70 A.D., look how the Lord jumped in prophecy. He, Because the next major event after this 70 A.D. is going to be the coming of the Lord. Because he jumped clean into the coming of the Lord. Now, go ahead and read verse 25. And in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, to seeing the waves roaring. Now, people are going to be uh, all confused and Signs going to be happening in the heaven and earth. They talking about all these blood moons and all that, right? Stuff is going down, but some people ain't paying no attention, which we know is some more stuff that got to take place that's even more prophetic and that's even more profound to the time that we're looking for. But go ahead and read. Men's hearts filling them for fear. People just going to be dying for fear on things that's taking place. They just kill your child just like, oh, they killed my baby. You just dropped dead. I mean, this is the type of stuff that's going to be taking place and. They say, well, Brother Sidney, why you read all this scary stuff in the Bible like that? Because you need to know what time it is. So you can prepare yourself to be uh, uh, get out to escape this wrath of the Lord by keeping his commandments and believing on Jesus Christ. 
and his, and the father. But now, go ahead and read. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Go ahead. And then shall there be the sign of the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. You see how he jumped clean to the end? Now, let's go further. Let's go into Amos chapter 5. Amos the 5th chapter. And we want to pick it up at verse 18. Amos 5 and verse 18. Because these are things that we need to take heed to and know how to order our lives and change, man. And I, I'm really, you know, some of this stuff's scary. <laughs> and But you want to know about it. That's why you on the street sometimes, you ain't got your watch on your cell phone. You be like, man, what time is it? You want to know what's happening because you got stuff to do. You don't have all the time in the world to make these changes in our lives. That's why you got to know what time it is so I can get, get this together. But now, let's go into uh, Amos 5 and pick it up at verse 18. Look what it say. Go unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Oh, I can't wait till my Lord and my Savior, sweet Jesus, come on back. Woe to people that desire this day because it's going to be. Look what it say about the day. Go ahead. To what end it is for you. And you got to make sure he your Lord and Savior. He going to be sweet Jesus to you. Because if you change and stop keeping these commandments, he ain't going to be sweet. <laughs> you got to continue to keep these commandments to the end. But go ahead and read. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Go ahead. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Now you running from a lion, then you got to uh, face off with a bear. And it's like, oh, man, I thought I escaped the hard stuff. Go ahead. And went into his, or went into his house and leaned his hand on the wall. You go to the house, lean on the wall. Whew, man, I got away from the bear and the lion. Go ahead. And the serpent bit then him. Then the serpent bites you, and then you get three steps and you die. <laughs> go ahead. Should not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Should not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Go ahead. Even very dark and no brightness in it. It's a very dark day because the Lord said he's going to kill people from... We're going to look at this. Let's go into Isaiah 66. See, and this is what time it is. This is the time of the Son of Man. This is what we're talking about. This is the big conversation now, that the Son of Man is going to return, and he's looking for righteousness on the earth when he returns. And if he don't see, if he see anything else other than that, it's going to be a problem. You might as well not call on Houston, because it ain't going to help you. So now, Isaiah 66, and pick it up at verse 15. Isaiah 66 and verse 15. When you get it, brother, go ahead. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. The Lord going to convert people with anger and flames. See, he, the Lord all gentle and it's merciful time now, right? Just change your life. Read the book. It's real easy to do this now, but it ain't going to be fur uh, when the Lord come back with that fury and now you want to talk to the Lord. Well, hold on for a minute, Lord. Well, Lord, well, why don't you have a little... I thought you was a... Because the Lord come back with fury, and look what he's going to do. Go ahead. They that for, for, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Uh-huh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. The slain of who? Lord. The slain of the Lord. See, this is really scary talk, but this is the time frame we're looking at. Like, we looked at the Lord was talking about rain and fire and brimstone to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and all that back in that day, right? The Lord was talking about with the flood, uh, uh, uh. Noah preaching about that. These prophets telling the, the Lord about to cart y'all off into slavery by ships. Man, the Lord ain't going to do that to no Jerusalem. See, some people don't believe and some people don't hearken. But now we talking about how the Lord going to come. And let's see what the New Testament say. Because some people be like, well, that brother, uh, see, they be reading that Old Testament a lot. Let's see what the New Testament say, because it's one Bible, one book. Let's go into Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians in chapter one. Second Thessalonians chapter one. Because, yeah, some people will see I'm, I'm all about sanctification and holiness. And see, I don't get all off into all that uh, ill talk. <laughs> see, that that's some that's some uh, that's some uh, rough talk that they doing. It's in the Bible. But we're going to look at what the news because some people are, see that Old Testament is rough. Let's go to the New Testament. And let's see what it's saying in the New Testament. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and pick it up at verse 7, brother. When you get it, go ahead. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. What? When the Lord Jesus When the Lord who? 
Jesus. Go ahead. Shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. That's what we read in uh, he coming back like a whirlwind with his chariots, with his angels, with his mighty angels. But this is the Lord Jesus. And it said, if you trouble, come on and rest with us. Keep this Sabbath with us. Come on, take this rest with us and get in this Bible, because this is a comfort to know what time it is and know what the Lord is doing. Go ahead and read. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Taking vengeance on who? Them that know. He taking vengeance on people that don't even know God. They don't even know God, Lord. Why are you going to take vengeance? Because you should have known. You should have known what time it was and you should have been studying or you should have been listening to the people that he sent forth, the brothers and sisters that come forth to talking to you. You should have been listening. Just like we. That's why we here. Because I heard some <laughs> brother talking to me. I let man, I don't know nothing about what they talking about. Let me get my life in order because I'm dumb. <laughs> and you have to say that. If you dumb, say I'm dumb. <laughs> I was one of the dumbest. But now the Lord got me dealing with this. I didn't go to nobody's church when I was coming up. I think I visited church two or three times when I was young because my mother said all them people is some crooks that was in them pool pits and stuff preaching. So she wouldn't go. So I didn't come up in no church. When brother talking about Catholic church and Baptist, I don't know nothing about that stuff. I get, I get into this word, though, because I'm like, I can read. <laughs> so the Lord blessed me, and I praise God. But now, what verse was that? It was the, almost the end of eight. Uh, uh, pick it up at the top of eight and, and read it again. And flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God. Go ahead. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord, he said he come back like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and fire. He said in, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that don't know God and that don't obey. Because some people know things, like I said, but they won't be obedient. I know the Sabbath day is the seventh day, but I go to church on Sunday. And they real proud about it. That's why the Lord talk about them stout hearted. He going to deal with them. All we do is plant the seed. I ain't going to choke you in the, um in a chokehold to keep this thing and see when the Lord comes. You know, like the person had you in a chokehold back in the day and you be like, time out, time out. I give. It ain't going to be none of that when the Lord returns. Lord, time. Ain't going to be no time out and all this stuff. <laughs> You're going to have to face these consequences. And they they be real severe. But let's go into Esther chapter one. Esther, the first chapter. These are things you have to take this Bible and life seriously. People always talk about real life, real talk, real time. Everything real, but then they really, uh, uh, it really is fake. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to change your life. But now, let's go into Esther chapter 1 and pick it up at verse 13, brother. When you get it, go ahead. Then said the king to the wise men, which knew the times. But so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. Now let's go into Luke chapter 12. He said the king was talking to the wise men that knew what time it was. That's who we talking to. If you don't want to know what time it is, you want to stay asleep, it's high time to wake out of sleep. But you want to stay asleep? We talking to those who are wise and that know law and judgment. You know what's going on. You know it's about these laws of God and about the judgment of God that's going to take place. But some people say only God can judge me. Were you sure you you ready for God to judge you? <laughs> Are you doing all what God say do? Well, no, I did. Well, let a man judge. That's why the brother say, I'd rather be uh, judged by 12 than carried by six, right? <laughs> I'd rather let a man, I'd rather, rather let man tell me that, hey, man, you're doing this thing wrong, brother Sidney, than the Lord to have to throw me in that fire. Let's go into Luke 12 and verse 54. Luke 12 and verse 54. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. And he, and he said also to the people, when you see a clouds rise out of the west, straightway ye say, they come with a shower, and so it is. Go ahead. When you see the south wind blow, ye say, there will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Now, I can go up to the grocery store. Somebody be like, uh, just a random person. Man, you see that? It's about to get ready to rain. How you know? Well, you don't see that cloud right there? I don't, it don't look like it's about to rain to me. <laughs> but they, they, the Lord tell you, people so smart, they can understand what's going on with, this, with the heavens. But, they, but go ahead and look what he say. Ye hypocrites. Ye hypocrites. Ye can discern the face of the sky. You so smart, you know what's going on in heaven with the weather and when it's going to be warm. And it, it happened too. You be like, man, that brother just said it was about to rain. Then it rained. I ain't even see that. I don't know how they determined that. They're like some meteorologist that don't, ain't got a job in that. But go ahead and read. And of the earth. Uh-huh. But how is it 
that ye do not discern this time. All this evil taking place, all the lies, the robbery, all this stuff that's happening on the earth, the murder, look at the news. And you can't discern that the Lord about to come back and do something about this? You need to, we need to know what time it is. But now, let's go into uh uh go into Luke 17. Uh Luke uh Luke chapter 17. Ain't that something? We in Luke 17, right? Sure. Oh, okay. I've been getting lost all lessons, so I'm trying to make sure I'm straight. <laughs> you, know? you know, you get caught up in these lessons because sometimes the Lord be showing you stuff and it scares me. That's why I'm like, go here. And I'm like, no, nah, don't go there. Go here, brother. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting a little messed up because the Lord got me shook. See, because I see, because you have to worry about yourself too. That's why I say it's a, uh, 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 sometimes it's about your, the, you got to save yourself, the Lord tell you. You have to worry about you so you can make sure you straight. See, don't think I got everything. I'm, I'm, I'm saved and sanctified and the Lord is my God. You got to make sure the Lord is your God. I know I got this on lock. Now, I ain't got it on lock. I'm still trying to make sure I got it. You know, that's why I'm scared too. You know, the Lord, man, the Lord, hopefully the Lord spare me, you know. <laughs> Shoot, I ain't all proud and, uh, you know, pumped up about it. I got to make sure I'm right. But now. Let's go into this Luke 17, and I want you to pick it up at verse 26, my brother. When you get that, go ahead. As it was in the days of Noah. Go ahead. So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. You've seen it was violence. It was corruption. It was wickedness. The thoughts was evil continually. Stuff people say out their mouth, it's like, wow. You, I mean, uh, uh, categorically come against the Bible, things that's um, quoted from the scriptures. That don't mean that. I don't believe with that. I don't agree with that. Everybody, everybody wrong. We all, I mean, all type of stuff that's said. But the Lord said, as it was in the days of the, uh, 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 Noah, so it's going to be in the days when the Son of Man come. Go ahead. Uh, uh, keep reading. Verse 27. They did eat. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark mm -hmm. when the flood came. And destroyed them all. See, so it looked like regular life, like now, but it's not regular life. Like all this stuff that we read about in the news, this is not supposed to be like this. But some people, we just, hey, this is just how it is. No, it shouldn't be like that. The Lord got to come and straighten this thing out. So the thing is, just like in the days of Noah, it looked like everything was cool to the day he went and argued. And the same day, the Lord came and destroyed them. Like it's a good day, you know. It's probably dry and everything. Then the Lord started flooding it. Because it could be like that. They, what they say, the calm before the storm. It could be all dry and pretty. Then next thing you know, it started thundering and lightning and dark. You're like, whoa. And the Lord brought that on quick. But this is how it's going to be in the days of the Son of Man because people ain't preparing themselves. But we ain't going to let this day sneak up on us like that because the Lord done told us what time it is. He gave us so many signs. You can't pinpoint the exact time, but he gave you so many signs to tell you around the time that you should be prepared for this thing. But go ahead and read verse 28. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot. Go ahead. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. They doing everything. And, it, and I look at it when we keep the day of atonement unto the Lord, which is in the Bible, Leviticus 23. Time I come from the atonement, it's like a beautiful day. But you got people out there working, construction work, kids coming home from school, going to the store, and do, people doing whatever they do. But it's a day of fasting before the Lord. It seems like a regular day, but it's not a regular day. And that, and, and when the Lord comes, it's not going to be a regular day. But it's going to seem like everything look like it's going regular and normal. But it's not normal because the Lord about to come back and do something about this sin. But go ahead and read. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Destroyed all of them. The same day it said. <laughs> that Lot went out like a, see, like a cool day. He get up out of there. That same day, the Lord rained fire and destroyed all these people. This is what we're looking at, the days of the Son of Man. We got to look at it. Go ahead and read. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Even thus. You, you talking about you don't understand what the words say? I don't understand thus and thee and thou. Even thus shall it be. <laughs> you got to know that that just means that's how it's going to be when the day of the Son of Man comes, just like how it was then. Go The same day, it's going to seem like everything rosy to some people and the Lord about to come back and destroy people from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth according to the book. Go ahead. In that day, 
he which shall be upon the housetop. All right, that's good, brother. Let's go on to this last place. Let's go on to Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10. Hosea These are uh, 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 things that, you know, we're reading about and you want to take serious. And like like I say, some people be like, well, why? Why are you reading all that hard stuff? Because <laughs> you want to know what's going on. I don't want to be in the darkness and still sleep when the Lord doing what he do. But now let's go into Hosea chapter 10. Because the Lord also said it, it just like. It was said, like how we even talk about now, how the Lord, we still talking about how the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And in a later time, we're going to be talking about how the Lord brought up Israel from the east and from the west and the north. See, we ain't talking about that now. But we talking about it's about to happen because that time is coming up where the Lord going to deliver Israel from all over every continent that's on the earth. Because that's where Israel at. Every nation under heaven. Not just in South America. If you see some chart on the Internet. Now let's go into Hosea chapter 10. And we're going to pick it up. Pick it up at verse 12, my brother. Hosea 10 and verse 12. Once when you get it, go ahead. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. See, it, it, and people always say, whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Whatever you're putting out there, that's what that's how it's coming. If you're keeping the laws of the Lord, it's gonna, that good going to come to you. If you're breaking the laws of the Lord, that evil going to come unto you. And that's what you're going to reap, that evil. That's why the Lord said, because he said, don't do this evil lest he bring it upon you. He's going to bring upon you the very thing he told you not to do because you want to do it anyway. But go ahead and read. Break up your follow ground. Break up that hard head. You know, your, your parents used to call you, man, that's a hard head. Go ahead. For it is time to seek the Lord. It's time to do what? Go it's ahead. time to seek the Lord and go ahead. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. And he going to come rain his word up on you and righteousness so you can be right and do right. And really, when you get that, that spiritual body, that's really going to be right. Because you ain't going to pain or die or cry and all this. That's what I'm looking forward to. So I hope someone got some understanding dealing with this lesson. And we invite you all to come out to 520 West 138th Street in Riverdale, Illinois. Tune in to our YouTube videos and watch us on the internet, www.theisraelofgod.com. And we thank you for watching this broadcast. We appreciate your time in Jesus' name.